Francis Perkins, Paving the Way to Better Labor. On March 25, 1911, Francis Perkins witnessed the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory in New York burn down, killing 146 workers. Motivated by the horror of this event, Perkins dedicated her life to social work and to help lead the improvement of working conditions. She worked with and served as Secretary of Labor for Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Throughout her 12 years of service, she helped in the legislation of many laws, changing working conditions throughout the nation. Perkins began her career at Mount Holyoke College, an all-women's undergraduate school, where she began learning liberal arts. Mary Lyon, who founded the school, advised the girls to go where no one else will go, do what no one else will do. This laid the basic foundation of Frances Perkins' life. It was in college when she proclaimed, I discovered for the first time that I had a mind. She graduated in 1902. Continuing on after college, Perkins pursued her education in social work by volunteering at the Jane Addams Hull House in Chicago, Illinois, where she worked with poor people as well as people from other countries who were new to the United States. A few years later, in 1910, Perkins became the executive secretary of the National Consumers League. This became her goal after Florence Kelly gave a speech while at her college that first opened my mind to the necessity for the possibility of the work which became my vocation. This is where she began her work with inspecting the safety regulations of bakeries and factories. During this career, she also helped to legislate the 54-hour bill, which shortened the amount of time required to work in a week. On March 25, 1911, Frances Perkins witnessed the Triangle Shirtwaist factory burn down before her eyes. She saw the woman jump from the roof in a last attempt to survive. In total, 146 workers died. The scene struck at the pit of my stomach. I felt as if I had to sear it into my mind as a never-to-be-forgotten reminder of the need to work for the unnecessary hazards to life, she later said. The event became a representation of the terrible working conditions of factories. This moment became the turning point of Francis Perkins' work. Thus, two committees were formed. The Committee on Safety and the Factory Investigating Commission. In 1912, Perkins began her career investigating factories as the executive secretary of the New York Committee on Safety. She negotiated with employers and pushed for accessible fire exits and less crowded spaces for working. I had to do something about the unnecessary hazards to life, unnecessary poverty. It was sort of up to me. The Factory Investigating Commission focused on ensuring laws to improve the regulations of factories. These laws became a model for other states. It was, as I am convinced, a turning point, Francis Perkins said. In the New York election of 1928, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected as governor of New York, he and Francis Perkins began a partnership that would last over 15 years to help improve labor conditions. On October 24, 1929, the stock market crashed, sending the United States of America into the Great Depression. Unemployment rates went up rapidly. We have awakened with a shock to the frightful injustice of economic conditions which will allow men and women who are willing to work to suffer the distress of hunger and cold and humiliating dependence. We have determined to find out what makes involuntary employment. When Franklin Roosevelt was elected president on March 4, 1933, he requested that Francis Perkins become his Secretary of Labor. She would only accept after he agreed to let her work for these items. She wanted to push for a 40-hour work week, minimum wage, unemployment compensation, workers' compensation, abolition of child labor, direct federal aid to the states for unemployment relief, social security, a revitalized federal employment service, and universal health care. Roosevelt accepted. On March 6, 1933, Perkins became the first woman cabinet member when she was signed into office. I came to Washington to work for God, FDR, and the millions of forgotten, plain, common workingmen, Perkins later said. Beginning her career as Secretary of Labor, she began working on the Wagner-Pizer Act of 1933. This act provided unemployment services for those who were seeking jobs and needed help. Also near the beginning of her time in office, in 1934, she implemented the Division of Labor Standards, later known as the Labor Standards Bureau. This group enforced the labor laws. 
Also, in 1934, one year after Perkins became Secretary of Labor, to decrease the rising unemployment rate, she persuaded Roosevelt to allot $3.3 million to the Special Board of Public Works, which then employed over 1.5 million people to work on projects such as parks and roads. This was known as the Civilian Conservation Corps. The people are what matter to the government, and the government should aim to give all the people under its jurisdiction the best possible life. A few months later, Roosevelt assigned Perkins the head of the Economic Security Committee, where she worked on Social Security. This act presented guidelines on old age support, unemployment compensation, workers' compensation, and aid to the needy and disabled. At that time during the Great Depression, over 6.5 million people were 65 or older. It's probably your only chance to get a bill like this in 20 years, Perkins said to FDR. She thought that no other circumstances as harsh as the Great Depression would push the Americans into passing the Social Security Act. Perkins said to FDR, insurance is the most brilliant achievement of the mind of man. Before the official signing into law, there was much controversy, but she did not let the high pressure stop her. And despite all of the conflict, Frances Perkins persevered and the government completed the mission. On August 14, 1935, the Social Security Act was signed into law. Four years later, after over a year of congressional discussion and debate, the Fair Labor Standards Act, or the FLSA, was signed into law in 1938. To be eligible for law, the FLSA had to go through Congress four times to finally be approved. All the while, Perkins and Roosevelt were pushing the limits with the court. The Fair Labor Standards Act included minimum wage, maximum work hours, and abolition of child labor. During the period after the signing, the minimum wage was set at 25 cents an hour, and the maximum work hours were 44 hours a week. In 1940, Perkins asked Roosevelt if she could resign because of all the pressure and opposition to her work, but he declined. Five years later, on April 12, 1945, Franklin Delano Roosevelt died, and Perkins decided to resign from office. She had completed everything on her agenda except for universal health care. However, she remained optimistic. There is always a large horizon. There is so much to be done. I am not going to be doing it. It is up to you to contribute some small part to a program of human betterment for all time. Following her time in office, Frances Perkins did not cease to lead. From 1945 to 1953, Perkins was a member of the Civil Service Commission that worked towards equalizing job opportunities. In 1957, she took up a teaching career at Cornell University's School of Industrial and Labor Relations, and she held that position until her death. Even though Frances Perkins was no longer Secretary of Labor, the laws she helped pass were still in effect and changing the conditions of factories and other workspaces. Many factories had higher wages and did not allow child labor. There were also better fire exits to prevent a tragedy like the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory Fire. The unemployment rate decreased, meaning that there were many families leaving behind a lifetime of poverty and moving on to a lifetime of success. Frances Perkins' accomplishments have lasted from her time to the present. Social Security is still in action and providing retired seniors and unemployed workers with money that will allow them to live above the poverty line. And still, child labor remains unused. Today, we have witnessed people protesting for higher minimum wage and it slowly has been rising from the original 25 cents. Frances Perkins paved the way for women in government and has allowed the population to see that women can truly change the way the United States functions. Frances Perkins died on May 14, 1965, at the age of 85. Throughout her life, all she had done created a lasting legacy. Secretary of Labor at the time of her death, W. Willard Wirtz, stated that, Every man and woman in America who works at a living wage, under safe conditions, for reasonable hours, or who is protected by unemployment insurance or Social Security is her debtor. No one could have simplified her service better.